abandoned by the government, forgotten by the aid community, neglected and abused by the society that is required to protect them. Many people are suffering in silence because they don't know how, because the issue is not that they don't know they are sick, they are mentally sick. They know they are mentally sick, but when they consider the stigma associated with it, then they shy away from sharing of their problem. The worst moments have been, you know, persons being brought in, they are tied up uh, in, in ropes, or uh, you're called when they've been locked up. I managed to pick a lady who was on the street in Banana, but when the doctor checked, she had already been raped so much. They're always viewed as a threat. Um, and, and many a times they are uncomfortable to be with around. These are the challenges that people with mental illness are struggling to live with every day. What is mental illness? It is the internal fabric or the internal uh, health of an individual when he is not in conflict, first of all, with himself. That is when we say an individual is mentally healthy. He is at peace with himself. And also he is not at war with himself. So that particular time we can say this person or this individual is mentally healthy. Now the opposite of that is true. And the mental is composed of reference. It has the mind, both the, sub, the conscious and the subconscious. It has the will and it has the emotions. Those are the three things that encompasses the psychology of a human. So when these three things are conflicting, there is conflict in the mind, there is conflict in the will, and there is conflict in the emotions, then we say that person is mentally unstable. There exists a vast and commensurate lack of understanding of mental health and illness among the populace, including the so-called educated and enlightened lot. Most of the people uh, don't even know that there's, su there's such a thing as mental illness. Is that actually people don't know how to identify someone who was broken down mentally. Two, people don't know what to do when there's a mental breakdown. We have what we call basic symptoms of mental conditions. Basic symptoms, which you may know that this person is gravitating towards a mental condition. One is uh, a social withdrawal. When you see a person who was, all of a sudden a person who was very outgoing, he has started withdrawing away from people. That's a symptom that this person is gravitating towards something. So social withdrawal. Then another symptom is what we call constant fatigue. When you hear a person saying most of it, even when he or she wakes up in the morning, he's always fatigued, he's always tired. You know, that's a symptom that's always not well. Struggle getting strip. Struggle picking strip is another symptom. When someone cannot sleep, we call it insomnia. So insomnia is inability to sleep or inability to catch sleep. Yeah. So if a patient is exhibiting insomnia, there is a high likelihood that this person is depressed. Or at the same time, if a person is sleeping too much, you know what we call hypersomnia. You're sleeping too much. You don't feel like waking out of bed then that is, that is also a symptom. Hypo or hyper? Hyposomnia, lack of sleep. Hypersomnia, sleeping too much. That is a symptom. Then the other one is uh, uh, eating habits. Either you have no appetite, lack of appetite is a symptom of mental illness. Eating too much, you realize all of a sudden there's a shift in your eating pattern. Either you are not eating, you have no appetite, or you are eating too much. That's, that's another symptom. Another symptom is what you call uncontrolled anger, temperament. You are, you are easily irritated by small things. Very small things can spark you and you do crazy things. You know, yeah, that's, that's a symptom. Another symptom of mental illness is, uh, is what you're saying, well, reckless behaviors. Either, either reckless sex or what you call impulsive, reckless or impulsive behaviors. Um, person gets his all her salary, drinks everything. According to WHO report released in 2017, mental disorders are classified into anxiety disorders, mood disorders, psychotic disorders, eating disorders, obsessive-compulsive disorders, post-traumatic disorder. 
a patient can, can have what we call psychosomatic disorder. Psychosomatic disorder means a patient has a physical illness that is interfering with his or her mental health. Or he has a mental condition that is triggering other physical conditions. So in most cases, when you're doing diagnosis and you're doing assessment, you check it at, at both factors. A physician will come in and a psychiatrist will come in so that they can marry the two. Is this person, is, 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 a, is a person having the, the mental condition as a primary condition or is a secondary condition? Or is a mental condition a secondary or is it primary? Yeah, so those factors are very, very important. Because if somebody has a, has, a, has a, for instance, if somebody has a prolonged chronic illness, depression is inevitable. Depression will strike in along the way. Annie Wangoi looks healthy and the bright smile on her face remains the pill of hope in her life. The last born in a family of seven and a victim of bipolar, she struggles to come to terms with her new health status, a condition that shattered her marriage four years ago. That's a good one. Makaka makasa watoto watatu. Uu wa mwisho, diyo alikuja nae, kakilikuwa kamwe simonja hivi na nusu. Mpurugano, mpurutano, sasa mimi kuenda huku, nikaona iku na problemu ya kiswa. Sasa leo nikasema nika tukuja na hawa makakata, lakini ye mwenyewe, alifuata mimi. Her husband, oblivious of what was happening to his lovely wife, turned violent and abusive all of a sudden. Kwa sababu niliona ikuna chiji. Ali chiji si uli alikuwa. Na ni mutu muso anasoma ikuna understand. Ni kukaona mambo yake ni fuata kupika mtoto iyo wake. Na ni kamutoto kadogo. Ni kaona ni kweri. Hata saa ingini anaeda kwa barabara, akanyango ni ngari. The wedding vow till death do as a part could not hold water anymore. And he was left with no option but to send Annie back to her parents. Unajua kama mutu wakuji kukuhuji maneno ya ule ya nakaa. Kweli we utaenda huko kwa ulise? Na wezi enda. Na wezi enda. Nikaona manatenga lakini sisi hiko lafikiti. Wangui has visited several hospitals with the hope of restoring her daughter's five senses. Only for Annie to be diagnosed with bipolar in 2016 after visiting Mathari Hospital. Kumpereka hospitali kiambu. Kiambu. Nikaona kama ni depression yuko nae. Sasa ndakitazi tukaenda kasimu wakanyambia huyu pereka yei Mathari. Kaanja kutipu wa huku, akarara, kakaa miesi tatu, saigini ya naenda na kaa bili. Sasa akarudi nyumbani. Anakaa kwa hivyo saa hile ningi tunarudi kliniki. A condition that has rendered the family helpless, spending sleepless nights as the dark cloud of socio-economic burden weighs heavily on her shoulders. Pesa, sida, unajua kulala masare ni pesa mingi. Kulipisu uku, ni pesa mingi sana. Tunakusukua dawa ya mesi miwiri, saingini na peo ya mesi, ndakitara kanyabio tasukua kaya mesi miwiri tu. Unalipa pesa ngapi yo dawa? Ingine nalipa arubu moja, mia sita. Ingine saa ingine naeda nalipa mia nane, ivo. Ivo, ivo tu. Tales of sorrow, torment and horror run from family to another. Growing up in a family with no parental love, rejection and societal ridicule, Zipora Wamboi has seen through hard times seeing her family branded Wenda Wazimu. I've grown up in a family where there is mental illness from my biological mom, my dad, and my elder sister. My sister had problems even when she was young, but we never really knew what it was until the year 1997 when she was first admitted at Madari Hospital. It was scary because when you are young as a child, you don't know what is wrong with your parent until you're out there playing and other kids tell you your mom is Mwenda Wazimu or you see people beating her because she has picked something on the road maybe a banana from a market woman and you have to signal the person that the person is not okay so we grew up with the help of well wishers but most of the times we were on the street because mom is not working and she would carry us with her when the illness strike 
A family of five members with multiple mental illness, Wamboi has had God's favor of sobriety as all her siblings and both parents were mentally handicapped. My mom had schizophrenia, my sister has schizophrenia, my dad is a PD, personality disorder. I came to meet him later. We, grew, we stayed with mom mostly in rental houses. Yeah, and it was very difficult, very. When you are the child of somebody who has mental illness, because even what you are supposed to learn by association, you might find her washing clothes in the sophoria, and you think that is normal. You see her being harassed, and it affects you psychologically. I dropped out of school severely. I took 10 years in primary, and uh, I well wish I paid for my high school education. Childhood years were hard. Walking behind a woman who is shouting and singing, and you don't know where you're going, and you don't know where you will sleep, I still, I miss nothing about my childhood. It's the same way we have hereditary conditions and hereditary chronic illnesses. Even mental illnesses, we have what we call hereditary conditions. You find a certain condition is in a family. You can find depression was in somebody's grandfather, it was in his father, and then it is in other successive generations. It is, it is genetically uh, acquired. At a tender age of five years, Wamboy had to take to streets to beg from well-wishers in order to fend her family. I was a caregiver to my mother because I, I would talk out. I, would, I hated the way she would be mistreated when she's unwell. So at, I can assure you that from the age of five years, I, I would be able to beg for money, I would be able to beg for food, and I would even talk to police officers to take my mom to hospital. So my sister, it was a question of stepping in, because now in 2004, my mom passed away. Her dark past has left incurable scar in her heart. At every second she sees her sister break into mental relapse, she sobs profusely. My experience with the mental health from a family point of view is a lot of stigma. A lot of loneliness because the few people I remember going to see my mother at the mental hospital could only maybe my teachers or somebody who is very close. For others, we were just watoto wa mwenda wazimu. At family level, I would speak about my mother is that, yes, I had a mother, but I felt I missed her. For those days, we could not talk. I missed her guidance. I also have a bit of stigma because if you say your mom was sick, your sister had this problem, then someone will look at how comes you're okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's still stigma even for us as caretakers. Mulifanya nini, familia wenda wazimu. The other thing is that when your patient is at Madari or has broken down, it really weighs you down as a caretaker. So whenever my, sis, my, my late mom was unwell, I would feel it. When my sister is unwell and unable to function, I feel it. The pain of seeing her mother humiliated by the cruel world sank deep in her heart, prompting her to start an organization that champions mental health awareness in Kiambu County. And now with education and the fact that I've learned a few things in life, I thought of an organization and the NGO realized it's the way to go. So I called. It was very hard, my friend. First of all, an NGO is not a business. Such that you're starting it so that you earn something. So getting people to understand why I needed to register an NGO was very hard. I got the minimum five, plus myself, four people believed in me, four others, okay? The minimum needed was five for board members. And I approached the NGO council and the, the rules, how to begin an organization. I started working on it, I started saving and in 2016 September, I'm proud to say we got the certificate of now what is Mental Health Concern Kenya. With specific objectives to create awareness on mental health. Having gotten an education in guidance and counseling, I can give a mental health awareness session free. And that I do. That I do in churches. That I do in organizations. Kenya Power Kiambu have been a beneficiary of that. The judiciary Kiambu has been a beneficiary of that. While well, George Minor, dressed in black trench coat to breast the cold, is among the patients living at the age of a judgmental society. 
His life seems to be on trajectory track of success, but lies behind his oily face is a burden of schizophrenia disease that stole all the hope he had in this world. Since 95, 1995, mm. that's when I started my medication. Uh. It's, it's been taking me well. Yeah. Okay, I've been in and out of hospital, but uh, uh, my family takes care of me. His brain blossoms with a myriad of business ideas, but all these are short-lived whenever relapse sets in. It's just that uh, financially I'm incapacitated, so I'm not able to do any kind of work. But I was thinking of operating this motor vehicle, whatever I can sell, like greens or fruits, pack it somewhere like banana, and then sell the fruits. Yeah, I had that idea. Close to 30 years after George was diagnosed with schizophrenia, not only it crushed his dreams, also robbed off his two wives, leaving him a solitude man. Doctor, I don't know whether he uses drugs as he do. Lakini daktari huwa na muambia, ukikata kutumia hizo vitu, utaka vizuri. Jutu kimpereka hospitali ya fugiwe like two days, and arudi back to normal. They go into the manic state. They become reckless and impulsive. They enter into impulsive behaviors. They start abusing substances. Now substances worsen their conditions. So he may have what we call double, double, double psychosis. Double psychosis. He has bipolar, which is a mood disorder psychosis. And he has schizophrenic which is a severe also mental psychosis, psychotic disorder. For Samuel Maina, his story was more of a scripted drama. His misdiagnosis landed him to a rehab in Mathari Hospital while in high school. I was first admitted in Mathari in 1997 when I was in Form 4. But I was just, in the, then there used to be a lot of stigma. They were just abusing me. You see now the causes of drugs, Instead of doing your exams, you are just they were abusing me, but they didn't do. I had a real problem. Twenty years in search of remedy, Samuel's family never knew their son would turn out to be a victim of bipolar condition. I thought it was just a minor thing. I thought if I stopped abusing drugs because I was abusing drugs, then I would stop. The problem would stop. He would go around the village saying he's the he's the what. He's like Jesus, yeah? So, at, at some point he would go without shoes. You know, the, it, they were very, very serious things. He even threatened our mother. This is when we saw it was very serious, as much as it were. For us, we thought he was pretending. Nazareth Hospital in Kiambu County became Samuel's home as he strives to restore his life. Drugs have, have been helping me, I've been taking them very care ceremonious I've never missed the drugs because I've known that the benefits of the drugs because they balance they make me so that I may be normal like any other I can be normal like any other person despite 30 years wasted in the quest for a solution to his condition Samuel still keeps his dream high the affected families share the same prejudice and stigmatization attitudes that has laid thousands of the mental ill patients and you are suffering. From the beginning, we should have started with a doctor. Yeah, so we regretted all the wasted time. Because right now he's 30, 38. And the problem started when he was like 17 years. The silent negativity and stigmatization surrounding mental illness in Kenya and Africa at large impedes patients' early diagnosis and treatment. When somebody has a mental illness, they think that somebody is cast. And it's a bad, and it's like a bad woman in a family. Mental health is not witchcraft. Mental health is not a curse. It is a disease like any other. I had a mom who had a mental health problem. I am functioning normally. So do not throw away the person because it's a curse or a binas mulifanya nini. There's nothing you've done for you to have a mental health problem. We are all struggling with certain conditions. It's only that mental illness is taken as, a, as an extreme case. There are other worse conditions than mental health. And I've seen also people managing their mental conditions very, very well, coming into a place of acceptance, you know, and they manage their conditions and they live normal lives, they lead normal lives. 
According to Dr. Manyoro, late diagnosis and untreated mental illness can turn detrimental. Some of these conditions are not purely treatable, but they are purely manageable. Because these are disorders, these are disorders that came into the brain, mental breakdown. There is complete imbalances because the brain has two factors. The brain has, has, has biochemical reactions, it has biochemical substances which we call amines. And also in the brain there is what we call uh, electrical activities. Like in, in, in neurological conditions they affect the, the electrical activities in the brain. Uh, psychotic conditions affect biochemical substances in the brain. According to World Health Organization, Kenya's mental disorders accounts for 5.9% of the total global burden. Prevalence of mental illness in Kenya is attributed to poverty, drug and alcohol abuse, stress, and other environmental factors. Some of the drugs we, we, we take in the, in the counter are also triggers. They can trigger a condition which was never meant to take that way. So some conditions are, are worsened by either incorrect medication or incorrect assessment. And I'm saying the first tip of any mental condition is assessment. Assessment requires time, requires accuracy, requires patience, and also requires preciseness. Because now if you misdiagnose a patient and you're dealing with issues of the mind, you can imagine the damage that can be done. When a patient is being put on drug he's not supposed to be put on. It may cause what you call irreversible damage. That is why in mental health assessment, mental health professionals will always consult and consult until we arrive at a point of agreement. This is either schizophrenia, it is either bipolar, it is either mood disorder, it is either depression, it is a neurological problem. Yes, mental state assessment is the first step. As incapacitated country, Kenya has 77 consultant psychiatrists, 418 psychiatric nurses, and 30 clinical psychologists. All of a sudden now we have realized we are sitting on a time bomb because statistics indicate one out of three people, one out of three, has either a, a behavioral, mental, or a psychological problem. So if a third of the population is sick in Kenya, 45 million people, 15 million people have, have, uh, have mental issues. So you can see we are sitting on a time bomb. So when you hear these things of suicide and homicides, a man came and slashed and killed the entire family. That was, that was a, that, actually that was a symptom of a major, a major, major mental condition. The report further raises a red flag on the increasing number of people with mental conditions among the young between 15 and 29 years in the country that needs urgent attention. That actually depression currently has been declared a global crisis. It's a global pandemic. It is becoming more dangerous than heart attack. It's becoming more dangerous than, uh, than even cancer because it's affecting more people uh, than any other condition. One, because of the lifestyle conditions. Life is becoming very, very fast. And especially young people, it's unfortunate that depression is attacking young people more than old people. Because there is there's a pedigree at which young people want to live by. They are chasing life beyond what their brain can accommodate. And for that reason, it, is very, it, becomes, it makes them very, very vulnerable and susceptible and predisposed now to attack of this, this condition. According to WHO 2017 report, prevalence of mental illness one in five adults experience mental health issues. One in ten young people experience a period of major depression. One in 25 people live with a serious mental illness, such as bipolar, schizophrenia, and depression. One in four adults suffer from a diagnosable mental disorder. 25% outpatients suffer from more than two mental disorders unknowingly. The mental state of a person at any point of time is determined by multiple social, psychological, and biological factors. External factors are issues like environmental factors, family breakdown, um, political instabilities, job losses, uh, family breakdown. All those are external factors that push an individual to extreme. And then he has what we call mental breakdown. Now, internal factors, uh, internal factors are those factors that, for instance, what we call genetic predisposition. 
an individual is genetically predisposed to mental illnesses. Then you also have what we call uh, sexual aversion disorders. They also category of mental illnesses. Sexual aversion disorders. Like, uh, like um, lesbianism, homosexuality. You know, these are sexual, sexual orientations which are against the norm. Um, masturbation, all those perversive bestiality, uh, the pedophiles, people who, who rape children, they're also in the category of, uh, of, of disorder, mentally disordered people sexually. Um, there are also people like addiction to pornography or addiction to pornographic images. Uh, so people, people gravitating towards those areas of sexual aversion, sometimes we call them hypersexual desire disorder. It's a condition. Uh, you, control, you cannot control your sexual urge. Lack of enough resources is a setback in mental health management. It's unfortunate that uh, most of the current modern mental health drugs are prohibitively expensive, out of reach of many Kenyans. Very, very, very expensive. Be they mood stabilizers, be they um, antipsychotics, or be they antidepressants, because many people are not able to access those, 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 those drugs. And therefore, the condition of the patient, families will suffer. Those who can afford, the resources are overstretched. Those who cannot afford, the conditions accelerate. But the government, I think, is trying. Actually, it is trying. Because a patient with an HIF card can access these drugs at a cheaper cost uh, in, 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 in Madare, specifically. Psychiatrists are very, very few. Um, psychiatric um, uh, clinic officers are also very, very few. It is only recently that uh, um, institutions have started training uh, psychiatric clinic officers. Psychiatric nurses are few as well. Uh, psychiatric um, um, support, uh, support, support personnel like counselors and, 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 and psychologists are also very, very few. Mental health care management remains a fair tale to those who look up to the government as there seem to be no structures in place at the moment in helping the destitute community. A very, very few uh, infrastructural facilities, hospitals that can offer mental health uh, services. If the, the government can make it possible to have at least, at least a psychiatric, one psychiatrist in every county or in every sub-county, and then psychiatric technicians like clinical officers, this burden can be, can be lessened uh, uh, upon the, 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 the lives of the population. The mental health budget at county level, at national level, is still very little. I have knocked doors and the answers I've always gotten is the budget for mental health. So if the budget for mental health would be increased. The pillars of mental illness awareness are long broken, but is there hope for the destitute? If we could get a mental health patient off the street by empowering the family, we empower community health workers to deal with mental health at the grassroots because not all patients of mental health need to end up at Madari Hospital. For me, it's a policy issue. One, the, 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 the government needs to look at uh, the policy issue, and especially when it comes to the, um, to the, to the, to the, to the mental um, uh, health. Then mental health needs to be given the, almost the first priority, um, given that the the, the mental health is increasing day by day and we are living with it and, uh, and staying with it uh, in our homes. The church now remains the center for refuge as hopeless families seek God's intervention. The, the first stop a church member finds himself in a, such a challenge is, is in a pastor's office. And so after we have gone through uh, the session with an individual, we, we, we weigh and see where, what to do next with the individual. Many a times we refer them to the uh, experts. One of the things that we have to do as a church is to um, accept that we face these brothers and sisters. They, are, they live in and among ourselves. Each and every day they come to services every Sunday. We meet them out there. We minister to their family members. 
we have to accept the reality that these are our brothers and sisters and we need to reach out to them. Society needs awareness to debunk the myths that shapes our perceptions, attitudes and approach to us mentally ill who are longing for love and our care. Reporting for KTN News, I'm Levis Msumba.